graced the covers of hundreds of magazines, yet you'd never know by looking at that flawless face that she had to endure a difficult and rather painful childhood. Well, it is an incredible story of survival. You gotta hear this next. Growing up, I uh, bet there was one girl in the neighborhood, maybe or at school, who was more beautiful than anyone else. You know, those long legs that go up to her armpits <laughs> and a thin body and probably a perfect complexion. She was so beautiful, so perfect looking, you couldn't help but say, gosh, I hate her. <laughs> well, my guest today is one of those tall, beautiful, flawless women who've made a million dollar career from their face. She's a supermodel. And you've probably seen her in those Estee Lauder uh, cosmetic ads. And in her personal life, she's married to rock star Rick Okasik, who will be stopping by later. And I think they have some love story to tell. The most important element in uh, Paulina's life is the special bond she has with her mother, Anna. Paulina says that her mother, Anna, is the one who put her own life on the line to rescue her. Let's welcome Paulina and her mother, Anna, to the show. <laughs> to have you come and talk to us. There is so much to talk about. Thank you. We have a supermodel married to a rock star. Not bad. Uh, Just a regular cliche sort of a thing. <laughs> yeah, Actually, almost it's too good to be model true. turned actress married to a rock star. <laughs> That's even worse. Yeah, it is exactly. a cliche. Exactly. And the woman is a stepmother. And she has a new project, which is a children's book about roaches. All right, I'll ask her about that one later on in the show. I wanted to uh, sit with you and your mother first and talk about the, uh, your lives, because this is a fascinating story about growing up, and I don't think that people know about that. I, I just don't. You didn't have an easy childhood. Ex set the scene and explain it to us. Well, um, actually, I, uh, my childhood from, um, from the time I was a small child until about 10 was, um, was quite wonderful. I mean, I, it, I, it had it, some very hard moments in it, but as a child, I used to think everybody, you know, everybody had a family like that. Everybody had parents that left them when they were three years old and went to Sweden and lived with their grandmas. You now, know? where were you living? Uh, at, we were in... You mean in Czechoslovakia? Yes. Um, small, very, very, very small town called Prosteov. Okay. And uh, actually, it's a story, I think, that uh, the years, the, the, my years of childhood, that, that it was my mom that really had to go through a lot of trauma during those years. What was the years. trauma, Mom, Anna? Well, we left Czechoslovakia in 1968. It was during Russian occupation, Russian invasion, with my ex-husband and left Pavlina behind. When the Russians invaded Czechoslovakia, why did you feel you had to flee? Because my ex-husband was involved in anti-communistic uh, actions and uh, he was in prison while he was a student and uh, he was afraid that uh, so he would be the first one who would go again. So Now, when you fled, you fled to Sweden? Yes, we, no. First we fled to Austria. And, and uh, we went through refugee camp, and after three months there we, we went to Sweden. And you left Paulina behind? Yes. We, well, well, I must say, at that point, my mother was, let's see, you were 22 years yes, old. Yes, I was 22 years and, old. And uh, there was Russian tanks coming into the country, and uh, the people, you know, people knew that the Russians were coming, that it was going to be an occupied country. Mm. And, uh, you know, s the people that wanted to were trying to get out, like, within those, it was like three days or something when yeah, the borders were mm. still open. And my parents, my dad had a motorcycle, that was it, an old motorbike. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, 
it wasn't exactly like the great idea to, you know, have like my, you know, the two people on the motorbike and bring a three-year-old child on it, weaving in and out of tanks, mm. you know, really people really getting shot left and right, and not a situation for a child. But how does a mother feel? I mean, you're, you're going to another country on the back of a motor, I mean, you're fleeing and you're leaving your baby yeah. Well, we, we really didn't think that it's going to be for a long time. We oh, were thinking okay. that it's going to be a short period of time, maybe three months. I see, and then she And catch up. Uh, then we're going to bring her to us when we are settled and when everything is safe. How long was it? <laughs> three years. Three years. So you didn't mm. see your child till she was six years old? Yes. Yes. How did that come about? Um, Actually, well, I, I have to tell you this from my perspective because as a, you know, um, as a child, I actually, I, I keep telling this to my mom that my very first memory, I, my very first long memory is when her and my dad left. And uh, it was my, me and my mom and my grandma, we were walking down the street and it was sort of a, a dusk, early evening. And my dad came by on, a motor, on his motorcycle and he said to mom, you know, come on, let's go. And my mom turned to uh, my grandma and said, uh, if we aren't back tonight, will you take care of her? Just sort of like, if we are not back before the morning, will you take care of her? So grandma said, sure. And that was the last time I saw my parents. Wow. Um, <laughs> now, when you e explain what happened, uh, you were separated from your husband in some way? And when you were trying? Well, we were when we came to Sweden, we started immediately uh, write letter to the Czech embassy and try to get passport for Pavlina to get her out of Czechoslovakia. But at that moment, they closed the Czechoslovakian border. And the Russians they, were in, and nobody uh, was getting in or out. And that's something that my parents obviously didn't count on. Mm. And they didn't realize that, you know, that they were probably, you know, they, they were going to have a really hard time to, mm -hmm. to ever see me again. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used a lot of publicity after that one, I think, when they realized yeah. that they, uh. they, they couldn't get me out and they couldn't go and get me. Mm -hmm. um, because as, uh, as um, ref refugees, um, they would, you know, they would have a pretty heavy sentence in Czechoslovakia if they came back. Um, so they used a lot of Swedish press. And that's, I guess, that's how I first appeared on in magazines, yeah, we, newspapers, we, 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 <laughs> lovely we, we, pictures. Bring this baby we, 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 to this country. Lucky. But yeah. there's another fascinating, I guess, I don't want to take too much time of this, but you were separated with your husband and when you finally got back, it, it was three years, right? And he had found yes, someone else? Yes, it was, I, we, we tried to uh, fight three years uh, to get Pavlina out of Czechoslovakia and we didn't succeed. And at that point, I was pregnant with my second child uh, Paulina's brother. Whom you're going to meet later on in the show. And, uh, <laughs> and I just uh, couldn't bear the thought that uh, I have one unborn, ch unborn child and one child which is alive and I couldn't even see her. So I, turn, I returned to Czechoslovakia again. She did go back. And, and then the family that's, fought to uh, Well, actually, that's, that's, that's where the real horror story began because my mom came back with the, with the idea that she was going to kidnap me because she was not allowed back into the country. So she mm. went under an assumed name with a false passport, six months pregnant, and uh, she, they got into the country fine. She, she hired two Swedish pilots to help her. They got into the country fine. They landed in the airport close to the hometown where I was. They were going to kidnap me on my way to or from school. Uh, without telling anybody because obviously it would have gotten busted and they were on their way to the town to get me and they got caught for speeding oh. taken mm. <laughs> taken to a police station <sighs> interrogated mm. and and somebody put in jail. recognized me there because I and grew you were up put in, in jail that, yes I've been put to, to jail and then I've been but they couldn't keep me there I was pregnant six months so and the Swedish press continuously bothering them so you know. The Sounds like a movie, doesn't it? <laughs> That's only the beginning of it. <laughs> oh. yes. So you, you stayed in yes, house arrest? Uh, yes, I was in prison for the first time and then they put me on house arrest. Isolation first until my second child was born and then on house arrest practically. And uh, they were watching me 
24 All hours the, a day. They moved yes. into the house across the street. Any friends that my mom that came over were um, afraid to lose their jobs, so she, mm. she didn't have any friends. All of this for one woman exactly. wants to be with her child. Doesn't that seem uh, like a lot of energy wasted? Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's, beauty it's one of thing communism. if she's carrying uh, secret papers that are going to mm. endanger millions, but here's a woman who wants to be with her child, and they mm. did all of that. Uh, by the time you went back to the country to be reunited with your father, he had found, he, it was how many years were you Three seven? years. Three so he years. He kept us there three years, and finally, uh, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. Was it Olaf Palme, or was it? No, it, it, was, was, in, oh. it wasn't Olaf Palme, but okay. he was involved, too. And he refused to go to Czechoslovakia, visit the country, unless, unless. they not gonna let me go Unless and my they children. released us. Good. So they kicked us down. They took our uh, citizenship from us, also from my children, which was really... Said, here, your passport's here, you're no longer Czech. We said, mm. great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show you. <laughs> yeah. And by the time she got back, yeah. there was no... Uh, father, right? There was no dad. He had found someone else. Yeah. Paulina has a great story about how her modeling career started. Will you tell us about it? Sure. Uh, <laughs> well, it started by my, um, I, I was, um, I had three very good, close girlfriends in school. And uh, we were actually the, the, the very mobbed girls. I, I, to the contrary to what you said about the long-legged, beautiful creature everybody loves to hate, well, everybody just hated me. There was no love, loving to hate me. Uh, I couldn't get a date if I killed myself at that point. Um, what is wrong with the men of America? <laughs> no, th those were those Swedish. Swedish men. What is wrong with the men of Sweden? That's half Norwegian, so oh, I, if oh, he saw you, there's a whole different <laughs> ball game. Um, it's I this think, generation. I think I look better now, too, than I have been, really. All right, she's claiming she was the ugly duckling. Oh, I, so I three really of was. these ducklings were together. So, and one of my girlfriends really wanted to be a photographer. So she would take these, you know, pocket Instamatic pictures of me, you know, with a little cheapo camera, and she would dress me up in her mom's clothes and do my makeup. And actually, the irony of all this is, uh, we used to copy Estee Lauder pictures because I used to think Karen Graham was a really gorgeous woman. So we did all these pictures, my hair slicked back and sitting like really poised in front of the coffee table with some flowers on it and all that. <laughs> and um, and uh, she would get the pictures back and she'd go, you know, it's amazing how good you look on a picture. Uh, that, just trying to tell you <laughs> what I look like not on the picture. Um, and. Uh, so she finally, she saw a little ad in the paper about, you know, modeling school. Do you want to be a model? Do you want to look like one? You know, that, that thing. Uh, and she sent her pictures in asking, you know, what do you think of my photographs? Could I make it as a fashion photographer? By the way, my girlfriend's really skinny and tall and she looks good on pictures. What do you think? And the lady that ran the modeling school got back to me immediately and said, I have to meet you, you know, right away. So I met her. She was this crazy old woman with flaming red hair and lots of makeup and she was she was quite wonderful and she introduced me to John Casablanca who's the owner of Elite about two weeks later as he was conveniently coming into town and uh, he just sort of looked at me and he said um, you got nice skin do you want to go to Paris <laughs> nice skin want to go to Paris yeah. that's pretty much it nice and skin bit bit teeth funny nice skin bat yeah nice nice skin funny teeth Keep your mouth closed. Um, For the rest of your life? She didn't. I didn't, and look where it got me. Did you, had you want, how old were you when this happened? Uh, I had just turned 15. Okay, Pauline is now 27. Had you wanted to be a model at 15? Gosh, no. No, no, no. no. What did you think when your daughter uh, said, I think I'm going to go model in Paris or wherever? Oh, I take it like a joke. I said, oh, thanks. Well, <laughs> I really didn't take that seriously at all, and uh, I just didn't want to forbid her because uh, I remember when my parents forbid me a lot of things, I really resent them, and I didn't want. Yes, if you say don't be a model, it. she'll run away immediately. Absolutely. And be a model. So I said, Course. sure, try, and uh, I made really a pact, sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. She said, look. Go ahead. I'm not happy about mm. it. Go ahead. If it doesn't work out, I want you back here after the summer's end and going to school. So said, sure, Mom. Well, it was not that it, when it d doesn't work out. We said, 
you're going to stay in Paris for one year, you're going to learn perfect French, and then you're going to go home and continue your school education. And we agree on that. Never so, happened. Well, <laughs> it just seemed that staying in modeling, I could make a little more money and have a little more freedom mm -hmm. and met, you know, yeah. people you that didn't think, think I was ugly. Now? Um, I still like her a lot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> for the love story. When we come back, we're going to meet the man that Paulina says, quote, the sexiest man alive, her husband, rock star Rick Ocasek. heard what I think sounds like a movie, the remarkable story of Paulina's childhood. She grew up in a communist country, and yet with her mother's help, they both managed to escape, and Paulina is now one of the most successful models in this country. And in her personal life, Paulina says things are pretty successful there, too. She uh, gave us the quote, I am married to the sexiest man in the world. Rock lovers know him as the former lead singer from the Cars. Please welcome Paulina's husband and rock and roll star, Rick Okasek. <laughs> What did you just say? I said I don't blame for feeling that way towards him. <laughs> ah, there's two women who think you may be very, very sexy, and you may oh, add me, great, and then too. Anna. That's four. It's very nice to have you with us. I must admit that uh, you and Paulina don't usually do interviews together, and you're kind of private about your personal life, which I think is fine. Uh, I must tell you that we could count on one hand the rock stars that we and the models we've talked to. So we're all getting together for the very first time. I'm going to let you tell us the, st the love story. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, there was a young man, and I love hearing this, don't you? <laughs> well, I guess it started with uh, we were about to do a video for the song called "Drive," uh, which was one of our one of our singles, and. Uh, and we, you know, uh, needed a beautiful woman to be in the, the video, but we needed someone who could also act. So uh, Timothy Hutton, by the way, produ uh, directed this video. And uh, so we met Paulina in a hotel room with the band. Which is not exactly usual, I just might add. The band doesn't usually take the model out to dinner before the video, <laughs> but it just so happens you, you told me that you saw me on the videotape and picked me. Well, out I did. Of I saw her, girls. everybody. <laughs> I saw her first on a video with a, you know a few other ladies, and uh, I picked uh, Paulina. Of course, everybody says that his manager says he picked me, and Tim said he picked me, and uh, everyone. But I ultimately picked her. Of course. And uh, so she came over to the hotel. So we were at the hotel, you know, because we sort of interviewed her. And, okay. When uh, you first saw her. Mm-hmm. Right. What was the first thought the minute you saw her in the flesh? Or on the camera, I don't care. <laughs> well, of course I thought she was, you know, absolutely stunning. I, I walked out into the living room and she was sort of sitting on the floor uh, in some sort of a bat dress. And, uh, and uh, we immediately started talking. I think that... Now, this is where I take over. Excuse me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell I, it from I'm my point takes of over. view. I'm glad she takes over. This is why our marriage is so good, because he lets me just, like, yabber on, you know? That's right. Um, I, uh, actually, it was, it was really odd, because, oh, well, it was love at first sight, but really like a, like a teenage dream, in a way, because for me, I had just come to this country, and I had just gotten my MTV. 
And uh, <laughs> being 18, of course, you know, I, I sat, I hung out by it and, and, and looked at it. And at one point I saw this video. I just, it just attracted me and I, and I sort of looked over and I thought, my God, that's just the sexiest man I've ever seen. <laughs> this is hard uh, to live up to, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> She also thinks Ichabod Crane is the, the second sexiest. <laughs> no, Mr. Spock, then Ichabod Crane. So when you saw him in person? Oh, so, so anyway, I just wanted to tell you that I saw, I saw the video and I was waiting for the credits to come up to, sit, to see who it was. And it said Rico Kasich. Uh, I thought the guy's Czechoslovakian because Czech names speak for themselves because, every, you know, you can immediately tell that somebody's Czechoslovakian when you're Czechoslovakian. I thought, if anybody, this is the guy I one day want to meet. Then, you know, kind of forgot about that, and I was asked to do a video for the cars. Well, I was from Europe, and I had never heard of the cars. I mean, I know this sounds cliched, but it's the truth. And, uh, and when, I, when I was chosen as the girl to do the video for the cars, I had no idea this guy, Rico Kasich, was in the cars. So you have to realize, I was sitting in this room with five guys. And I'm going, okay, so are we going to dinner yet? And they were saying, no, we're waiting for Rick. And then... You know, of course, he made a late entrance. He knows how to do it. And he um, opened the door, and I just, you know, I just started hyperventilating. And I thought, <laughs> oh, my God, thank God for, for that I'm sitting on the floor, because I would have just passed out. And uh, he walked over to me, and he sort of just did this. <laughs> Well, that was a sort of a, a slow thing, but uh, actually that first night we went out to dinner and everything, and uh, actually, you know, Paulina speaks uh, much better English now. I mean, she could barely speak English at the time. I was super intrigued by the fact that, you know, she would invert words and use, use incorrect me. syntaxes and everything. I, I thought that she spoke, you know, her speaking was like poetry because she would use the wrong words. Same with her mom. <laughs> I mom keep telling her mom that, you know, she now, sounds... Now, wait, so... there's, a, there's something I've just re been reminded of. Mm. You were married. That's true, I was. <laughs> that was a little bit of a problem, yeah. That was so, another problem. Is that why things moved a little slowly? <laughs> uh, well, actually, they didn't move slowly for us, uh, but uh, I was married, and that was, that was something that I... You know, I thought, wow, that's, a, that's an immediate problem right here. <laughs> Meeting Paulina is an immediate problem in my life, you know, because this, this, could, uh, this could be very distracting. And in fact, it was. After the first night, it was about the most distracting thing in my life. What so. do you mean? Was well, I mean, distracting from, from how my life was going at the time. You know, I was sort of, uh, you know, I'd just come off the road for eight months, and I hadn't seen my family, and... and, and uh, just years of being on the road anyway, I, I barely ever saw my family. And uh, I just uh, sort of fell in love pretty immediately. Really? And immediately? I had to make, in other words, uh, this wasn't just a model who was going to do a shot. She no, stayed no, in your because, head? Uh, no, that wasn't it at all because, you know, uh, you can meet a lot of people, but uh, they're not all right. Or, you know, somebody can be beautiful, but you may not. I mean, you know, for be example, attracted to them. Just, just something is, uh, you know, I mean, uh, obviously, if, if somebody came into my, you know, if some guy showed up on a doorstep that I had to do a movie with, a blah or whatever, and, you know, was attractive and talented and smart and all, I'm sorry, there's no way that he would ever come up to what, you know, what Rick is to me. So, therefore, you know, if, if you have two people in love, they're, they're in love. If, if they're not in love, then that's where distractions come in. Therefore, I don't believe there's anything such as, you know, the so-called home wreckers or, you know, divorce is a, is a sad thing. And especially if there are children involved, that's, I think that's where let it gets me, Let really me ask intense, Mother. But. Your daughter is now definitely not going to return from Paris to be your daughter. She's going to be a supermodel. And she's making a video, and she's met an American married rock star. What goes through Mama Anna's head? Well, my immediate reaction was, oh my God, why a rock star? Why a star to start with? <laughs> and uh, I was thinking, well, 
it's going to pass, maybe. It's going to pass? I think yeah. in the glamour polls, we were yeah. on the low end of the totem pole. Like, really whether low, we should, like Whether we should make it or not. Yeah. <laughs> but I always felt, uh, you know, that it was just going to work and it was going to happen. You always knew it would. How well, long I, did yeah. you court between that and getting married? Five years. Five years? We've been but together that was for that was living together for three of those years and and you know being quite familiar with each other before how long have you been living together then all told well all together since we met it's uh, eight and a half years so it gosh that's pretty it's good lasted. isn't it in the it's world lasted of a lot longer than most yeah. of the people I know in the entertainment you got business. married on an island we in mm -hmm. St. Bart's right yeah. we have pictures of that yeah looks like a wonderful oh wedding. it was it was an amazing wedding we invited just our closest friends basically and rented a couple of houses and everybody came out for a week to have a holiday and then we got sort of married in the middle of it and just had you know partied on and you know we're in the sunshine a lot of our friends couldn't you know um, don't usually have time for vacations or too busy so it was you know it was it was like spending vacation with 20 of your best friends and then oh you know, isn't that great celebrating a really special fun. moment in your life <laughs> The plot thickens. Paulina is 27, and she is a stepmother to four of Rick's sons. Did they accept you right from the beginning? Well, actually, two of the sons are from a, from a marriage when he was very, very young. Uh, so they're kind of grown-up boys, and one of them, Adam, who's going to be here later on, um, is illustrated the children's book that we did. So uh, I'm very, very close to them all now. They're my absolute best friends. I mean, I couldn't imagine how dull life would be without them. But in the very beginning, uh, my littlest stepson, who is now 10 years old, um, he wasn't really too fond of me right, right away. Uh -huh. um, but it wasn't, uh, I think he just didn't really know where exactly to place me in his life, because we would play together quite a lot. And, and then he would get upset and, uh, you know, sort of hurt me in some way. And then I would get upset and then would run off into a corner and go, oh, my God, I don't think I like being a stepmother. And, you know, <laughs> then come back and then try again. And uh, I must say, you know, in, in, uh, it's worked out so beautifully in the end that all of that was absolutely worth it, you know. And uh, also at the same time, I must say that... Uh, you know, I mean, being a stepmother is not easy, and I don't really... Boy, you're kidding. It, I don't, it's not really an enviable position altogether, uh, well, unless... Paulina makes a good stepmother because she's a, she's a great friend to the children. She never tried to be like their mother, and she never uh, disrespected their mothers. Yeah, I'd like to know, do you have um, anyone like a model or an actor that encouraged you into your career? Uh, no, because I never really wanted to be a model. Uh, that happened completely by mistake, by, by my girlfriend. No heroes? Is there anyone you have? Uh, it's uh, such a good question. People, people that I really admire, yes. I mean, I've always been a huge fan of Audrey Hepburn, for one. Uh, Ingrid Bergman, uh, George Sand. Uh, Clara Schumann. I mean, I have... You have good taste. A lot of Very good. Outs. That's not a bad <laughs> list. Very she told us what she thinks of you. You're flat out the sexiest man alive. What do you think of her? I think she's the sex <laughs> sexiest woman alive. I'll buy that. <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> let's meet one of Paulina's stepsons. And get this, they're almost the same age. We'll be right back.
Uh, I would like our director uh, to take a picture of the people on home base, kind of a shot. I have never, we have never had a home base with that many gorgeous people on it, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. talking with Supermodel, one of the reasons that they're beautiful is that's part of what they do for a living. Supermodel Paulina and her mother, Anna, and as Paulina says, this sexy man, her husband, Rick Okasik, and as we mentioned earlier, Paulina is a stepmother to Rick's four sons. We would like you to meet one of them now. This is Adam. You're 22, and your mother, stepmother, Paulina, is 27. Is that a problem? Uh, it's not really a problem. Uh, I don't really look at her as my stepmom. Uh, rather, they're just a really good friend. She's a great friend to me. I think, I think that's something that we, you know, it's clear with all the stepchildren. They have wonderful moms. I'm not going to replace their moms. Um, their friend, hopefully, and confidant, and, you know, somebody that, you know, we do fun things together. But yeah. they have their moms, you know. So uh, I think we're just, like I said, we're like, they're my best friends, you know. Yeah. Does dad have good taste? Dad has good taste. Okay. <laughs> produces beautiful sons yes absolutely I think that he they uh, the two younger men are giving me the look that they have gone into Disney World down they're on a talk show they both have the looks on their faces which is like amazement like am I really here one of the other amazed faces is Paulina's brother Kim right like that's right what am I doing are you sure this isn't MTV no it isn't okay Kim What's the funniest thing you remember about your sister when she was growing up? Now, let's take you all guys back to the story. Remember mom was pregnant, with right? Me. And she was in jail, and, they, and she had to have... This is the baby. This is what the one she had. Now it's all it comes together. Oh, okay. That's actually why, why she got, a prison, got out of prison, because of you. Yeah, it's all Nice move, me. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing I remember, well... Uh, we spent a lot of time together when we were kids because mom was working nights and all that. Days and nights because right. she was trying to make a, uh, to be a nurse and she had to work and go to school. So I sort of uh, really brought Kim up, more or less, you know, uh, in the beginning. Um, and sometimes I was miserable, miserable about it because I wanted to go out and play with my friends and not be stuck with this, you know, snotty three-year-old. <laughs> Excuse me. That's all right. Well, you weren't the only one that was miserable. <laughs> sound the way it certainly sounds the way I talk to my brother and certainly sounds the way he talks to me uh, is it ever a drag being uh, Paulina's brother well I really didn't know much about it before I came to America I know it's like was yeah. it drag now well it was when I came when I went to high school because I had no idea about her fame or anything until I walked into dorm rooms and everywhere were pictures of my sister and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, quite you bizarre. can realize how that feels. Adam, you and um, Paulina have a great relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You worked on a project together, a new children's book, which just came out called The Ad Ready, Ready for This, Guys? The Adventures of Ralphie the Roach. Uh, and Paulina co-authored the book with her best friend, Joanne. Please welcome Joanne. Joanne is a model? Joanne is a model. I'm kicking well, the towel. <laughs> I w yeah, I was a model for 13 years, and then about three years ago, I decided that I didn't want to do it any longer. She now, actually here comes the talk show part of it. Tell me, why is a gorgeous woman like you in love with roaches? <laughs> I have this thing about insects. I've always loved insects. Even as a child, I loved insects. come live with us in Puerto Rico and we'll... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'd never seen... I mean, I come from Manchester, England. I'd never seen a roach before. Ah! Ah. So when I came to New York, I thought I was living in this disgusting apartment because I had all these roaches crawling around and I thought it was really terrible. But then I came to like them. 
to, to them. You didn't call up the landlord and say, get rid of Ralphie? No, I felt bad about it. I felt she bad didn't put out combat. She didn't, you know, she, uh -huh. she learned to like them. I, I, I sometimes I even found them in my bed, which was pretty bad. Oh. <laughs> that was bad. That was Ooh. disgusting. No, but really, did but that she's... occur to you very early on to do a story, or were you looking around for... No, um, I, I, I was playing Monopoly one day, and then the roach, there was this big, big roach, Ooh. and I had some cookies that were sitting, you know, the crumbs from the cookies, and then all of a sudden this roach came up and he started eating, eating the crumbs from the cookies, and he was walking around the different spots on the board. The streets. Thinking, he seems like he's a real person, you know. And I just, <laughs> made, just thought of an idea of writing about roaches. Did I tell you models were strange? Did I? <laughs> By the way, the illustrations are superb. Thank you. They are. It, do you do that? I mean, have you um, done that before? I've never done it. Actually, I did it in high school. Uh, You're good. You yeah, really thanks. are good. OK, questions and when? Yeah, I'll get up there. Why not? I don't know if I should stand it. I'm just getting into the business, and a lot of times people say, you're so lucky, and I was wondering when you, if you take luck as hard work meeting opportunity, when did those two paths pass for you? When did your opportunity meet your hard work? Uh, well, you know, that's a really tough call in a way because I believe when it comes to modeling, I don't believe it has anything to do with talent, perseverance, patience, any of those things that apply to you in a regular, you know, in a, in a different job. It has nothing job. to do with talent, perseverance, or patience. No, because if you don't have the looks, then you can have as much patience, perseverance, and talent as you want. You're not going to make it. Uh, you know, if you're not five foot eight at least, and if you're not it's photogenic, tall, that's, you know, then, then you're out right from the beginning. Um, so it's really being at the right place at the right time as far as modeling goes because you know we went through the 70s where there was a lot of blondes and blue eyes and now it's getting into more exotic looks like you know fuller lips and brown hair and so on so it's really about you know uh, being there at the right time I mean I really I really see that I mean that the fact that that I became successful uh, is still a, a tremendous surprise to me you know Seeing the three of them, my thought is they're sitting around and they're, they're thinking and drawing roaches. And uh, it, doesn't the modeling business pay off, guys? I mean, why are you doing this? Oh, it, well, uh, you can answer me when we return. We'll be right back. <laughs> You want to answer the question that I left you with, which About is... About weird models yeah. doing uh, roach books? Is the, is the modeling business not paying off and we're going into roaches and... Uh... Uh, well, no, actually, that is why we are able to go into roaches, because modeling business <laughs> is uh, <laughs> That's... obviously done its good deed for us. So, uh, no, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful job in, in, in that way, that it actually allows us to sit around the kitchen table and... Uh, come up with a story and, and write it and you know it's we don't have to go to work from nine to five and then get home really exhausted and tired and would she make a, a good mom she'll make a great mother no doubt about it i can't wait to I be a mother that, I think when, she when is been this going to happen school teacher uh yeah i passed my real job i should have been a school teacher uh when is it going to happen gee I, I have no idea i mean i you know um when it happens it happens and, and i think we'll be very excited about it i have to I just remember this uh, uh, because my little stepson Derek was supposed to be on the show today too, but then his uh, school had a mountain climbing trip and he really wanted to go there. So <laughs> I just thought uh, there's this like little cute story about him is when, well, he was the one that we, I had a little trouble with in the beginning and now we are definitely best, best friends. There he is. He's so cute. He's so beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, and I, you know, and when I first met them, I guess part of my thing was, I mean, it sounds, it's, it's a little silly, but I wanted to impress the kids that, hey, you know, I'm kind of famous too, you know, not just your dad. <laughs> yeah, I, I was kind of hoping they would like me better if they knew that I was a famous model. And, uh, and I would always catch them, like, looking at me, you know, doing autographs and stuff, and they never said anything about it. And I thought, wow, you know, they're such polite kids, either that or they hate me, you know. And not until years later, actually, like about a, six months ago, we were talking, Derek and I, about it. And I said, well, you know, what did you think when all these people would come up to me and ask me for autographs? And he said, 
Well, I thought they were asking because you were with Dad. Oh. <laughs> yes. Quick, I just want to know, have you been back to Czechoslovakia? Say that again, sorry. Have you been back to Czechoslovakia? Uh, actually, yes, I have, and it wasn't, for me, it was a very emotional um, I would thing because so. I went, I, I wasn't allowed to go back for 16 years, so in your mind, it's sort of like a person dies. I don't know if this is true. You don't diet, you don't work out, and you smoke cigarettes. Is that all true? Shh, my mom is here. Oh, your mother. <laughs> oh, I know how that is. I have the same problem myself. I absolutely understand. Sir. This question goes to Paulina's mother. Have you ever decided to model with your daughter? Because you are quite beautiful yourself. Oh, oh, what a sweetie pie. They have made, uh, I believe they made a video together, a mother-daughter video. What, do you two spend most of your day together? How does it work with your career? You mean me yes. and I? All the time, yeah. You're always together, 24 so. hours a day. Pretty much, yeah. Because she can go with uh, you and you can go with her, right? <clears throat> yeah, when we, if she's doing a film, then I go with her. If I'm doing a tour, she goes with me. Because I've been, my, we're married 28 years and I'm always with my husband 24 hours a, a day. A it great really marriage. works. Yeah, yeah, you have to absolutely. be. Absolutely. You were talking about the height. Do you personally think that the height requirement is just too strict in this business for, the, for us petite models? Like, I think uh, all the requirements are too strict. I think the age requirements are too strict, and I think the height requirements are too strict because obviously there are many uh, petite women that are absolutely stunning and uh, older women that are absolutely gorgeous. And I think I'm, I'm hoping that one day that will let up. The age thing is already getting there a little bit where older models are starting mm -hmm. to do um, important work. Working, sure. Yeah, Isabella Rossellini. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, there are more of them, but. Yeah, absolutely, and I don't think it's fair, but, you know, then I didn't make it up. <laughs> Do you ever see your dad? My dad, um, I haven't seen my dad for probably close to about 12 years. And uh, I, we're just starting to get back into contact a little bit with each other now. And actually, I learned that from Adam, in part because Adam and Rick didn't spend their child, you know, Adam's uh, childhood together. But Adam sort of sought him out and, and became really good friends. I want to thank all my guests today, Paulina. And uh, Joanne's new book is called The Adventures of Ralphie the Roach. And we are happy to say that all of our audience members with children will take home a copy today. Thank you very much for coming today.